Today's plan is to go all out with this trigonometric integral that involves the quintic powers of the sine and cosine functions. So yeah, it's a pretty interesting structure, but how on earth do we approach this? Well, we could make use of the linearity of the integration operator and write this as the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sine x divided by sine to the fifth power of x plus cosine to the fifth power of x dx plus the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of cosine x divided by, again, sine to the fifth power of x plus cosine to the fifth power of x dx. And if we take the first integral, that is the sine one, and perform a phase shift going from the x realm to the pi by 2 minus x realm, then we have sine of pi by 2 minus x being equal to cosine x, and cosine of pi by 2 minus x being the sine of x, meaning that the phase shift of pi by 2 just turns the sine function into the cosine and vice versa. So that means the two integrals are identical. So all of this implies that the target integral i is twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of cosine x divided by sine to the fifth power of x plus cosine to the fifth power of x dx. Okay, it seems like we've simplified the structure a little bit, but now what? Well, you know, I like using secant functions, specifically squared secant functions, because they introduce squared tangents. But this time, I'm going to use the quintic power. That is, we have secant to the 5 of x, and we expand using this thing, and that gives me twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of now secant to the 4th power of x dx divided by, now what is the sine times the secant? The sine times the secant is the tangent, so that means we have tangent to the fifth power of x, and the cosine to the fifth and secant to the fifth cancel out quite nicely. Okay, and like I said, I like squared secant functions, so I'm going to break down the secant to the fourth power in the numerator and turn it into secant square x times secant square x and just expand one of them as 1 plus the square tangent of x dx divided by tangent to the fifth power of x plus 1. Now I can introduce a substitution that is letting tangent x equal u which implies that the squared secant of x dx equals du, and this means that i is now twice the integral from, well, as u approaches, as x approaches 0, that is, we have tangent 0, which is 0, and as x approaches pi by 2, the tangent will approach infinity, and for the integrand, we have secant square x dx turning into du, and we have 1 plus the square tangent, the tangent being the u function, and we have 1 plus u to the fifth power in the denominator. Okay, now what? Well, now would be a good time to introduce a very special function, the special function being the beta function. So let me use the linearity again and write this as twice the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 by 1 plus u to the fifth power du, plus the integral from 0 to infinity of u squared divided by 1 plus u to the fifth power du. Okay, now for another substitution where I let u to the fifth power equal t, which implies that u equals t to the one-fifth, which further implies that du equals one-fifth of t to the negative four-fifths dt. Okay, so this implies that i equals twice, and the limit here will remain exactly the same. They're not altered by the transformation. And from both integrals, we could factor out the one-fifth factor, and that gives me integral from zero to infinity. The du turns into t to the negative four-fifths. Terribly sorry about that. dt divided by one plus t. 
and we also have the integral from 0 to infinity. Now, we do have t to the negative 4 fifths, but we also have u squared. Now, u squared would be t to the 2 fifths dt here, and we're dividing by 1 plus t. So on simplifying the numerator in the second integral, I would have, I'm going to be left with t to the negative 2 by 5. Okay, so far so good. And now the two integrals I have can be simplified using the beta function. Recall that the beta function with complex arguments u and v is the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the u minus 1 divided by 1 plus t to the u plus v. And in this case, in both cases, for both the integrals, that is, we have u plus v being equal to 1. Anyway, before that, recall that this equals the beta function is related to the gamma function, that is, by gamma u gamma v divided by gamma u plus v. So in both cases, we have u plus v being equal to 1. So that's gamma 1, which is 1. And we're left with gamma u times gamma v. And of course, if u plus v equals 1, then this implies that v equals 1 minus u, meaning that we have gamma u times 1 times gamma 1 minus u, that is. And here we apply Euler's beautiful reflection formula. That is gamma u times gamma 1 minus u would be pi times the cosecant of pi times u. Okay, great. So for the first integral, we have 2 fifths times all of this stuff. In this case, we have negative 4 fifths. That should be u minus 1, so add a 1 to that. That should be 1 fifth. So we have pi times the cosecant of pi by 5 plus for the second integral. This time you would have 3 fifths, right? So that's pi times the cosecant of 3 pi by 5. So factoring out the common term of pi gives me i equal to 2 pi by 5 times the reciprocal of sine pi by 5 plus the reciprocal of sine 3 pi by 5. Okay, so the sine of pi by 5 has a pretty nice closed form. That's 1 half of root 5 minus root 5 by 2. And the sine of 3 pi by 5 has a similar structure. That's 1 half of root 5 plus root 5 by 2. And we can actually get a really nice result of the sum of the reciprocals of these two sine functions involving a very special number. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We have i equal to 2 pi by 5 after reciprocation. We can factor out 2 times root 2, meaning that I have 4 pi root 2 divided by 5 times what's left is 1 by root 5 minus root 5 plus 1 by root 5 plus root 5. And on simplification, I have 4 pi root 2 by 5 times root 5 plus root 5 again plus root 5 minus root 5 again. And on multiplying the terms inside the square root, I have 5 squared is 25 minus root 5 squared is 5. That's root 20, which is more nicely written as 2 times root 5, correct? Some cancellation, and I have 2 pi root 2 divided by 5. And now I'm going to separate the terms and write this as root 5 plus root 5 by 5 plus root 5 minus root 5 by 5. And on simplification, this can be written as 1 plus 1 by root 5, or root 5 plus 1 divided by root 5. And similar story here, root 5 minus 1 by root 5. This is pretty good, because root 5 plus 1 reminds me of that very special number that is the golden ratio. 
So root 5 plus 1 divided by root 5 would be root 5 plus 1 divided by 2 times 2 by root 5. And this thing here is, of course, the golden ratio, phi. So we have 2 phi by root 5 here. And for root 5 minus 1 by root 5, we could expand using the conjugate. So that gives me upstairs, I'm left with 5 minus 1, that's a 4, divided by root 5 times root 5 plus 1 again. And this can be expanded as 2 times 2, meaning that I have 2 by root 5 times 1 by phi. And all of this seems wonderful, but what on earth does it even mean? Well, it actually means two things. One, we started off with a really cool integral and we're going to get a really cool result to match. That's great. And the second thing it means is that now is a very good time to like and subscribe. So what are you waiting for? Anyway, time to piece together the result. We have i equal to 2 pi root 2 by 5. And of course, we can factor out 2 by root 5. But of course, all of that is also in a square root, and we're left with root phi plus 1 by root phi. Some more simplifications. We know that root 2 squared is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4, so we have 4 pi divided by 5 times root root 5 times, on simplification, we have 5 plus 1 divided by root phi. Okay, so we have 4 pi divided by 5 times 5 to a quarter, which will give me 5 to the 5 quarters, and phi times uh, phi plus 1 is phi squared. So we have phi squared divided by root phi. And 2 minus 1 half is 3 halves. And 5 to the 5 quarters can be written as 5 to the 3 halves if we expand using 5 to the quarter. So once again, introducing this term gives me 4 pi times root root 5, and a quarter plus 5 quarters is 6 quarters, or 3 halves. That means we're left with 5 divided by 5 to the 3 halves, which is an absolutely gorgeous result. What an integral. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.